All right, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I hope you enjoyed your lunch time. My name is Paweł Badura, and together with Professor Blamek, we are going to moderate the session. Uh, the session consists of two parts. The first one uh, will cover two presentations from our guests, from, from our sponsors, our companies. And then uh, we will go into the poster session. We have 30 presentations. All of you probably know that you have about two to three minutes. The process will be very fast. We don't have time for discussion, sorry for that. I believe all of you regret that. Uh, let's start. Let's believe that you will get all knowledge you want and you will pass all knowledge you want to, to the audience. Uh, and my pleasure is to introduce the first speaker, uh, Mr. Adam Grama from the Enforce Medical Technologies. Uh, and I ask you to deliver the presentation on most advanced solutions in the field of lower limb prosthetic. Okay. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for the invitation. My name is Adam Gramal, and I am R&D engineer and CEO of Enforce Medical Technologies. And today I want to tell you something about our most advanced solutions in the field of lower limb prosthesis. Well, let's start from the statistics in Poland. In Poland, nine to 10,000 uh, people each year lose their limbs, uh, most in Silesia, as you see. Uh, what they can get now? Not so much, just like this. This is a food, uh, such food, food from the wood. Uh, no shock absorption, weight two kilograms or more. It's, uh, patients can walk only 500 uh, steps per day, as our patient Veronika, who is with me, uh, did. Once more. What is our solution? First is our dynamic food. It's, uh, I show you. This is here. It's uh, a food made from carbon uh, fiber composite, uh, aircraft aluminum. It has uh, IP68, uh, water corrosion, uh, water resistant dust protection, and as you see, it has CE. It's not only a prototype, a single prototype. It's, uh, we are manufacturing it for patients already. Uh, it's first class medical device. Uh, it is registered right now. We are the only company in the Poland who did it. Uh, and in uh, Eastern Europe, of course. Uh, as you see in our prosthesis, there are no limits. Uh, you can see first uh, Andrzej. I hope that it will be Andrzej. Yes, this is Andrzej. And he is riding on snowboard on the slope. And for him, it's, 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 uh, it's OK to, to ride on the snowboard. Let's go next. Next, you will see Sasha. Sasha is a soldier who came to us uh, last month. Uh, he lost his limb on the mine uh, two months uh, ago, and now he is playing football. Could you play? You have to wait. And the result of uh, Sasha's rehabilitation is just only three weeks after he gets his uh, first uh, prosthesis. So as you see, he plays like, like me or like you. It's, uh, it's a normal, healthy person. And for us, it's a it's, uh, very pleasure to, to, to give him a, a prosthesis. What's more, because we have no time. Oh. Thank you. Uh, our most uh, advanced solution is our bionic food. The only food, bionic food in, this, uh, uh, in Europe uh, that is made, actually, here. It allows uh, the ankle flexion, just like our healthy uh, ankle, and it adjusts in real time to uneven terrain. Even slopes, uh, ramps, no, no, it will be an issue. Of course, uh, we did a mobile app for it, and um, if, you, if someone wants to sh uh, show, I can show uh, anybody who, who wants to see it. What's more? Uh, would you play? Uh, this is a gate of our patients and uh, bionic food on the stairs, as you can see, just like us, normal people. And it's uh, in the final stage of the um, process of them uh, imp implementing on the market. So I hope that in the December we will be ready to, to sell it to, to, to people. And of course, uh, last but not least, uh, Enforce Socket. It's uh, our uh, socket, as you probably saw here. And it's, uh, we are eco. Uh, we don't use gypsum. We don't use uh, anything that normal uh, prosthesis do. Uh, 
And uh, what's the most important thing? Because even the best food without a good socket is, uh, is nothing, is, uh, is useless. So our sockets is uh, uh, made from 3D scan and it's very, very safe for patient, as you see on the Sasha. And uh, you can see that uh, lower price doesn't mean uh, lower quality, especially on the knee flexion. This is a, a, a research of our uh, Mar Marcin, who, who, who worked on the stairs previously. Uh, as you can see in our prosthesis, his uh, limb after amputation has got a uh, flexion during the heel strike, uh, but in his previous uh, foot, much more expensive, it doesn't. So, uh, so it much much more better gait in this is our foot than than in its uh, uh, previous case. And uh, our post uh, amputation care procedure. After amputation, six to eight weeks we have to wait. And after that, the patient uh, has a contact, first contact with us. And after about one week, uh, we did a 3D scan of his stump. After just 24 hours, we are ready to, produ uh, for, to give uh, p to patient a uh, fitting socket. And after four days, uh, we can give the patients the final socket, the final prosthesis, not the temporary prosthesis. This is but uh, prosthesis like Sasha's uh, get. And after that, uh, after three to four hours, many patients uh, can walk without any supports, like uh, Sasha, like Veronica, as you see. And after about four to eight weeks, uh, we have to um, verify our settings of the prosthesis and, of course, uh, for the rehabilitation. That's our team, uh, 50, uh, 52,000 uh, uh, work hours, uh, and uh, of course, uh, we, I think that it will be much more. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the invitation. I hope that I can give you five minutes. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for your uh, great presentation. We are really impressed. And it is my pleasure to introduce the next speaker, Aneta Denner uh, from uh, Hirmet Company. Uh, she's going to present University Industrial uh, Research Collaboration. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Aneta Denner. Thank you for the invitation. So the uh, goal of my uh, short presentation, uh, um, I would like to promote the collaboration of industry with universities, which from our experience uh, can be very beneficial for both sides. Uh, so, on the beginning, a uh, very short presentation about the company and, uh, and products. Uh, so, Chimred uh, is a family company with over 100 employees and 85% of our sales exports. And we work in principle from idea to solution. It uh, means we manufacture the instruments for, from scratch in our factory uh, to have uh, full control over the production, the whole production process. Uh, our core products are uh, micro uh, instruments, but uh, we uh, but we also manufacture instruments for orthopedics, uh, also general surgery instruments. Uh, so the materials we are working with are stainless steel and uh, titanium. Uh, we also manufacture some uh, some dental instruments. So we have very long experience with with, uh, with also with titanium uh, titanium instruments. So we can also provide service for metal working. Some main technologies available are cold working, traditional and CNC machining, grinding, polishing, and sandblasting, electrochemical polishing, anodizing. Uh, we can also uh, offer galvanic coatings, uh, welding, brazing technologies, uh, laser marking. And there are also more, more technologies uh, we, can, uh, we, can, we can offer. So this is the headquarter of the, of the company the bird's eye view on the company. Uh, so the, uh, the production facility has over 4,000 square meters. Uh, so uh, we combine a precise handwork with uh, CNC technologies and also uh, some robotic technologies. Uh, so the uh, main uh, Competitive advantage of the company is our active, uh, uh, our active participation in R&D uh, activities. 
So uh, we are industrial partners for research organizations and we participate in the international consortium within uh, innovative uh, projects. We, uh, now we are working with uh, uh, Polish uh, with Polish universities, and also together with these universities, we can offer uh, a complete service for uh, development and, and, and research for for medical products. So, from our experience, so both industry and, uh, and university can uh, can benefit from 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 this uh, from this collaboration. So. Uh, uh, not only in terms of uh, research, but uh, also uh, students uh, can be exposed to real-time jobs in, in our company. So here are some examples of our projects, uh, which uh, we run with uh, the cooperation uh, in the cooperation with uh, Polish universities. Uh, so uh, this is uh, this is the uh, project uh, BioVelf. Uh, it was finished in the uh, 1980s, uh, so a very successful project. Uh, uh, we, we, uh, in, the, uh, in this project, we collaborated with Polish Academy of Sciences, uh, and uh, it was uh, the continuation of the, uh, of the project uh, uh, Polish Artificial Heart. So the main achievement of the, of the projects are, uh, are uh, artificial heart valves. And also, and uh, and also anti-thrombogenic uh, uh, coatings. Uh, so we are um, we're industrial partner for international uh, consortium together with Polish Academy of Sciences and also some Aust Austrian uh, partners. Uh, SPD, uh, SPD Biotribo, so within uh, this uh, project we elaborated uh, friction welding technologies for titanium alloys with antibacterial coatings. So uh, the optimization of welding technologies for titanium can be uh, considered as a significant achievement within this, uh, this project because uh, titanium is uh, quite demanding in terms of uh, welding. And also for instruments, it is it is very uh, it is very useful because uh, uh, sometimes different material properties are required uh, for for example working parts and the handle of the of the instrument. Finger implant project it's uh, it is still still running. Uh, but now we can assume that the main achievement of this of this project are, is the new patient-specific implant design, uh, with bioactive coatings and also with dedicated instruments for easy surgical procedures. Uh, the next project, uh, also together with Polish Academy of Sciences, uh, Antipat coat. Uh, so the, it, it will be finished in 19, uh, 20, uh, in uh, in 2024, uh, and uh, uh, this project focuses on Cooper-based Cooper uh, antipatinogen coatings uh, made by electro deposition or electroless deposition, and we are also working on some metal on some metal uh, matrix composites. So within this project, we are working on an efficient and, uh, and easy way of deposition uh, of coatings that can be used also for surgical uh, instruments. So thank you for your attention. Thank you. Many thanks to our partners. We are thrilled with the possibilities of cooperation involving us and perhaps all of you. Uh, and now let's go to the poster session. People say that a good movie trailer takes not more than two minutes and 20 seconds, so take also the opportunity to show all your uh, research highlights uh, in about that time. And the first presentation, uh, which I have the pleasure to introduce, is the use of GIFT toolbox in the process of assessing physiological changes in the brain based on LBNP training, preliminary studies. There we go. Uh, okay. Uh, welcome, everybody. My name is Ilona Karpil, and I'm uh, working in Institute of Medical Technology and Equipment in Zabrze. Today, I will briefly speak about preprocessing and different in the brain before and after LBNP lower, um, lower blood negative pressure uh, training using MRI imaging. At the beginning, what is uh, LBNP? Um, LBNP system allows for carrying out research and training of pilots in conditions of um, ischemic hypoxia and orthostatic stress, which induce hypotension. Now I move uh, to 
the materials and methods. MRI examination were performed on a free Tesla scanner. Pre-processing was performed in MATLAB with a GIF toolbox. The following methods were used fast ICA. And due to limited time, uh, I will present only ICA20, but uh, another analysis I will pre uh, describe in the future um, publication. Um, I'd now like to move on to uh, results. If you look at this, you will see seven features. Here we are to connect to gram, on which they are uh, the big test selected components. Uh, here we are uh, before training uh, connectogram and uh, uh, correlation bef uh, before training and after uh, feature four and uh, feature uh, five. And um, using fast uh, ICA for uh, ICA20, some of the higher correlation occur for components IC13 and IC16 and uh, compare Mm, compare IC8 um, and uh, IC10. And IC13 IC and IC16. IC13 is located in the left cerebellum, it's Broadman area 36, uh, and uh, IC16 is um, in uh, located right cerebellum, it's Broadman area 30. Uh, compared to after training, uh, where we have uh, IC8 located in um, left cerebellum, it's Brodum area 36, and IC10, it's right cerebellum, Brodum area 30. And uh, short conclusions, um, selected comparative analysis allow to shorten the preprocessing time and in the future may be the basis for standardization and optimization of data. The obtained results made it possible to locate the active areas in the brain area in relation to the selected number of IC and uh, methods. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And the next speech will be on the influence of sound stimuli on the human body posture. Sorry for not introducing the speakers, but we are not sure which of the authors is the speaker, so we're using okay. only the titles. There we go. Okay, uh, hello, my name is Marta Chmura. I am from uh, Department of Biomechatronics, Faculty of Biomedical Engineering. And the topic of my presentation is uh, the influence of sound stimuli on the human body posture. The main aim of the research uh, was to determine the influence of noise on the stability of human posture in a virtual and real environment. So, uh, materials and methods. Uh, the research group consists of uh, 18 people. The, there was te uh, 10 women and eight men. Uh, participants were asked to stand still on a stabilographic platform. Two speakers were placed on the floor in front of the platform. Each trial lasts 60 seconds. Um, the research procedure, procedure consists following tests. It was measurement in silence with open and eyes closed, measurement in noise with, uh, with, uh, in noise with eyes open and eyes closed, and the measurements in virtual reality. Uh, also in silent and in noise. In research, was used uh, was used white noise of 60 decibel. Uh, COP path length, uh, COP move ranges, and values of the asymmetric coefficient, coefficient were analyzed. There, uh, there is a decrease in the value of the coefficient after the introduction of noise in VR. Body movement was distributed more evenly on both limbs during the noise. There is no significant difference between the measurements of character stability in silence and in noise in the real environment. Significant changes were observed in the case of measurements with moving VR, where there was an increase in the path length. It may prove that thereafter introducing noise, the person calmed down his movement and was moving like the scenery. The whole body follows moving scenery. So, short conclusions. Uh, introduction of noise has a different effect on the subjects when they were in real and virtual environment, and there is a need of further research with sounds of different parameters. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next presentation is on influence of the salinization process on spherical aluminosilicates. 
Uh, good afternoon, my name is Agnieszka Dubiel and I'm a PhD student. Today I would like to present my research, exactly influence of the selenization process of spherical aluminosilicates. What is exactly the aluminosilicates? It is very interesting material because it's a very ultralight filler. Why is it very ultralight? Because this uh, microsphere, it's empty inside, not exactly. This is a carbon dioxide and nitro oxide inside, but the shell of this microsphere, it seems like uh, ceramics. Uh, what, is it, what I exactly do with this material? So the first I treat uh, it with caro acid, so I want to create a good mechanical bonds. Then I create a selenization process. I use inorganic and organic uh, selenizator. So, how it look like. Uh, in here we see the um, how my aluminum case look after a process. Uh, so why I do it? <laughs> so the first, uh, the main, I would like to create new type of composites using in biomedical engineering, exactly in dentistry. Uh, probably I would like to create a new bone cement. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And now let's listen about the motion capture system study on human balance. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Martina Sopa and it's my great pleasure to tell you about uh, some project we've been recently working on uh, on Poznan University of, no of Technology. Uh, the name of, the, of this project is Motion Capture System Study on Human Balance and the purpose of the study was to use our motion capture system BTS Smart and uh, AMTR dynamometric, dynamometric platforms to assess uh, human stability during performance of uh, several uh, clinical tests on, uh, on human balance. And if it goes about materials and methods, uh, the study was performed on uh, 30 healthy young adults, and the Unterberger, Unterberger, Unterberger and Fleck balance tests were performed uh, according to the medical description of those tests. Uh, and uh, the motion capture system was used to uh, assess the parameters of, uh, of our patients uh, during the performance of the study. So if it goes, uh, uh, goes on the Unterberger's test, uh, we've uh, performed uh, two uh, parameters to assess uh, the uh, rotation of the patient during performance of the test and uh, the distance they, uh, they were Mm, they were stepping uh, during the performance. Uh, and as you can see on those uh, two pictures, we were able to uh, assess the stability of, uh, of our patients with, uh, some, with, some, with some values. Uh, the, and the Unterberger angle uh, is, the, mm, is the value which is uh, assessed uh, according to the uh, physical uh, state of, of the patient. And, and if you see the Unterberger distance, uh, you can see that uh, the distance that is captured on the end of the uh, on the end of uh, this this performance is lower than the distance that was uh, maintained during the study. So here you, we can see that uh, using motion capture system for this test is valuable. Uh, and if it goes about about, uh, about the flex te flex test, we've assessed the, for example, the COP uh, path uh, during the performance, and we've uh, we have. Mm, assess the area uh, of the COP that was uh, that was uh, that was uh, performed during the study uh, with the use of uh, image processing, and also we have uh, and also we have assessed the uh, shear force during the movement uh, of uh, during the performance. And if, go, if it goes about results, I've, on, I've already mentioned some of them. Uh, first of all, uh, we have got uh, the result that uh, it is beneficial to assess human stability during the, uh, the clinical test with the use of motion capture system, so we can objectively tell about the uh, balance of the, of the human. And in the Unterberger test, we've got uh, some simple parameters to determine patient's uh, rotation and uh, and uh, in translation during the uh, during the uh, performance, if it, and if it goes about the flex test, we've uh, accurately assumed the uh, COP path area during the performance. And in conclusions, uh, we can observe the uh, it is beneficial to uh, observe the entire course uh, of the of the study with the with the use of uh, motion capture, uh, and we can also assess the parameters uh, according to patients uh, patients. Uh, movement. Uh, and that's all for today from me. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.
And the next speech is on the assessment of muscles excitation during physical activity based on surface electromyography. Um, my name is uh, Mika Barbala. Let me say some words about the assessment of muscle excitation during physical activity based on surface electromyography. Uh, the aim of this study is to propose and illustrate the methodology and algorithm of EMG signal analysis uh, for selected muscle during physical activity. The problem is that the EMG uh, is a very complex uh, signal controlled by nervous system and depend on muscle, ex uh, muscle properties. Uh, additionally, it's uh, very sensitive to internal and external factors, so uh, it's uh, need uh, an effective uh, processing uh, method. Uh, we propose uh, the method which consists of three steps. The first one is pre-processing based on set of filters. The second one is uh, signal envelope and thresholding. Uh, the threshold value is connected to muscle excitation. Uh, in order to provide a fairly objective measure of the muscle uh, excitation, the EMG signals are uh, normalized by using the maximum voluntary contraction. And the results, uh, at the top we can see the signals for normalization with um, MVC level mark by the horizontal line. And uh, below, on the left, we can see the row EMG. And on the right, uh, we can see the signals after processing and after normalization uh, with the muscle uh, excitation expressed uh, in the percent age of muscle uh, contraction. And uh, all this for the uh, deep squat activity. And the conclusions, uh, the presented method of signal processing is able to assess the muscle excitation and it could be used uh, to uh, evaluate the muscle condition. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And the next talk will be on the conditions for effective disinfection with UVC radiation. Uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Alexander Bonjek. I'm a PhD student uh, from University of Zielona Góra. And I would like to give you a quick presentation about conditions uh, for effective disinfection with UVC radiation. Uh, that was carried out uh, with the project from Polish National uh, Center for Research, Research and Development using UVC technology to reduce transmission of SARS-CoV-2 virus and reduce of infections in hospitals, realized in years 2021 to 2022. Uh, for materials and methods, uh, the study was carried out in the form of radiometric measurements uh, using a spectroradiometer and uh, microbiological evaluation using model E. coli, Escherichia coli bacteria. Uh, the radiometric measurements were carried out uh, in uh, three-dimensional grid shown there. Uh, uh, with, uh, in an isolated test room with uh, 72 watts uh, uh, UVC source. Uh, by remote control measurement system. Uh, the microbiological evaluation was performed by preparing petri dishes uh, with uh, E. coli colonies and exposing them to UVC radiation for a certain period of time uh, at uh, given distances. After exposure and 24-hour uh, uh, incubation period, uh, the, the remaining bacteria was counted using uh, co uh, colony counter and survival percentage was then estimated. Uh, as for the results, uh, as both radiometric and uh, biological studies have shown, the effectiveness of, U of UVC radiation is dependent on factors such as distance from the radiation source uh, and number, power, and location of UVC sources. Uh, the survival percentage of E. coli bacteria shown on this uh, graph uh, shows that relatively high effic efficacy uh, of UVC radiation is only uh, present in very close proximity to the UVC source. Uh, the source itself does not emit radiation uniformly over its entire length, as is shown on this graph. Uh, and before any questions may arise, uh, the lamp was cleaned prior to the measurements, so it's not uh, adhered uh, or something. 
Uh, the radiation intensity distribution performed at two different heights uh, confirms that the radiation distribution is uneven through the test area, uh, and that the radiation uh, loses, uh, loses its power very quickly, and uh, it's only around uh, 10 to 30 percent of uh, maximum uh, measurement, uh, maximum measured uh, value at distance 3.5 meters from the source. Uh, the result suggests that the use of uh, single UVC per room uh, proves to be insufficient uh, to achieve uniform radiation distribution over the entire area. Thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation. And let me introduce the next speaker who will uh, present the results of research on numerical analysis of temporomandibular joint prosthesis. Good afternoon. I'm Marta Soha. I'm a student at the University of Technology. Uh, with my colleagues, we have developed a numerical analysis of temporomandibular joint prosthesis. The aim of the project was a numerical am analysis of the implant together with the patient's mandible carried out in the ANSYS software. We received the implant uh, from the company CHM. Um, material and methods. The first stage was to scan to the objects using a laser scanner together with the appropriate ScanTech K-Scan Magic software. Then on the basis of scanned objects, a volumetric model was created and the qualitative analysis of the implant and mandible was carried out in a GeoMagic design software. The final stage was to carry out the finite element method. A computational uh, model was created in the form of a nodal grid. Initial and boundary conditions were determined such as Contacts between the elements of the system is rigid, fixed support were received on the surface of the implant stem. The load in the form of a vector force was applied to the surface of the implant. Materials were selected such as the implant alloy cobalt from chromium molybdenum and the mandible as a compact bone. During the analysis, total deformation equivalent elastic strain and equivalent von Mises stress at a variable load of 50 to 587 newtons were studied. The greatest faults were relate, related to the maximum bite force of an adult suffering from bruxism. The results were presented in the form of color map, uh, uh, color map from the ANSYS software. As a result, deviations during the scanning process of less than 0.1 millimeters were obtained, which was influenced by the large scanner head in relation to the size of the implant. Stresses and deformation increased linearly with increasing force. For comparison, at the maximum loading force, the total deformer, deformation was about 1.1 uh, millimeters. The equivalent elastic strain was 0.25 percent, and the equivalent von Mises stress was 414 megapascals. Whereas in the case of force of 50 newtons, these values were 0.1 millimeters, 0.021 percent, and 35 megapascals. While the finite element method in this case did not contribute to exceeding the yield point of the implanted material. However, we obtained the desired test results, but they were very but they were simplified due to deviations in the scanning process and taking into account only the compact bone during the research. To sum up, the implant would fulfill its function in the patient with bruxism while not causing undesirable ailments. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. And the next talk will be on piezoresistive behavior of carbon-carbon composite based of, on expanded graphite and polyphorphor alcohol. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, so my name is Kamila Nowatarska, and uh, our research was based on uh, the influence of specific modifications on the piezoelectric properties of the tested samples. Uh, the experimental investigation has been conducted to assess electrical response uh, as a function uh, of time under constant stress. Uh, um, our uh, expanded graphite uh, was provided by the uh, Carbon uh, Lorraine group from France. And we've uh, tested four types of samples. The first one was uh, compressed expanded graphite. Uh, not subjected to any modification. The second one was uh, compressed expanded graphite mixed with uh, polyphorphol alcohol subjected to the cross-linking process at a temperature of uh, 100 uh, Celsius degrees. 
The third one was uh, compressed expanded graphics subjected to decarbonization, uh, process at the, uh, 800 uh, Celsius degrees, and the fourth uh, and the last one was compressed expanded graphite mixed with polyphosphoryl alcohol subjected to the cross-linking process uh, at the temperature of 100 Celsius degrees and to the carbonization process at the temperature of 800 uh, Celsius degrees. Uh, here we can see uh, four diagrams and uh, we can see that um, the resistance, uh, resistivity uh, drops under the more and more weight applied. Um, as well as uh, the expanded graphite uh, with fulfill alcohol composite uh, show lower resistivity than the uh, samples based uh, on the expanded, pure expanded graphite. And uh, our, so, uh, our short conclusion was that the resistivity decreased with compressive stress uh, at the range uh, of uh, 0.525 megapascals. Thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation and for keeping in time. The next talk will be on optimization of math electro writing, 3D bioprinting parameters using the Taguchi method. Hello everyone, uh, I would like to uh, brief myself uh, shortly. Uh, my name is Taç Arşanacak, uh, I am from Turkey. Uh, now I am working, uh, I am a postdoctoral researcher uh, with a biofabrication team. Uh, I am working with uh, Dr. Malgor Zata uh, Birgün. Uh, our time is uh, Precious, uh, you know, uh, my research about uh, saving time uh, about some uh, design of experiment technique. Uh, we are working on a uh, melt electro writing uh, system. Uh, what is the melt electro writing system? It is, uh, uh, you know, uh, when you are uh, working with uh, some 3D biofabrication, uh, 3D. Uh, you need to uh, biocompatible uh, biocompatible cells. Uh, with this process, uh, you can uh, use some hydrogel or you can use some uh, polymer uh, materials. Uh, but it is uh, very uh, time consuming for uh, researchers. Uh, because we have so many parameters for like uh, volt voltage, uh, temperature, uh, air pressure, uh, or uh, air pressure and uh, nozzle the uh, nozzle and collector uh, distance and writing speed. Uh, it is very hard to uh, determining optimizing uh, optimum parameters. Uh, there is a, a design of experiment method. Uh, its name is uh, Takuchi method. Uh, it's founded uh, by Genichi Takuchi. Uh, it is uh, a very uh, useful uh, design method uh, in automotive uh, industry. Uh, we are trying uh, in this system. Uh, you can you can see a multi electro writing system. Uh, we are pre uh, we are using some uh, voltage for uh, printing some scaffolds, uh, and uh, you can printing some uh, hydrogel with uh, some syringe, uh, and uh, you add some air pressure, or we are using the uh, nitrogen pressure, uh, and uh, it is very hard to finding some uh, uh, optimum parameter uh, like this. Takuchi give us some. Uh, design of experiments, it is like uh, four power, uh, five, uh, you should be doing some experiment like this, uh, but uh, it is uh, less, uh, it is uh, prefer some uh, runs for uh, 16 run, uh, and it prefer some, uh, it is using some uh, analysis of variance, uh, it's prefer us some uh, methods and uh, th this is our parameters. Uh, when you are 
our results uh, you can see uh, like same uh, but it is not same uh, we are measure uh, all this distance at diagonals uh, and uh, we are using some uh, variance analysis and uh, it gives some uh, larger the better or uh, nominal is the better or, or smaller is the better uh, Takuchi prefer us uh, with this formula uh, we are using the nominal the best uh, and uh, we are giving some uh, main effects uh, ratios and uh, it is not seen uh, response tables uh, it's prefer uh, which one is best uh, these uh, red points are uh, best parameters for uh, statistically an after statistical an analysis that, uh, and this one is a contribution uh, for which parameter contribute your uh, study uh, and uh, we found uh, it prefer uh, us to 5.6 kilowatt voltage uh, 93 uh, centigrade Celsius temperature and 15 uh, Pascal pressure uh, and 1000 uh, speed uh, when we are using uh, this uh, experiment uh, it gives us uh, better parameters and uh, we can uh, we can take the results uh, with Psegor uh, it is the same uh, our con uh, conclusion it uh, uh, in our system uh, temperature affected uh, voltage affected uh, this percentage uh, thank you very much Thank you for your presentation. The next one will be on optimization of prosthetic food made with the use of exotic metamaterials. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Agata Mrozek, and I'm a PhD student at Poznan University of Technology. Today, I would like to talk to you uh, about the optimization of oxaptics unit cell for application in lower limb prosthetics. The main aim of the study is to analyze the influence of geometric features of uh, oxaptics unit cell on the obtained uh, energy absorption amount. Uh, the analyzed oxidic structure was rent around honeycomb, and the alpha angle, which uh, has essential impact uh, on the obtained effective Poisson's ratio, was changed in the range from 50 to 78 uh, degrees. And um, well, the negative Poisson's ratio is the unique properties of this kind of structures, and what is the results of having a negative Poisson's ratio. When conventional materials are stretched in one direction, they usually become thinner in direction orthogonal to the direction of applied force. When oxidics are stretched, they undergo expansion. And uh, moreover, while, while oxidics are compressed, they uh, contract. So uh, in our load case, uh, we assumed that the oxidic structure out are mainly uh, exposed to the um, compressive load uh, due to the nature of, the, uh, uh, of uh, loading the lower limb prosthetics. And um, we evaluated the specific energy absorption uh, as the total energy absorbed and uh, as the ratio of total energy absorbed and the total mass of the structure. And we evaluated the, um, um, the influence of the changes of alpha angle uh, on this parameter. So on the left side, uh, we uh, have uh, uh, the uh, obtained results. And uh, as the um, value of the alpha angle increased, the specific energy absorption was lower. Uh, so it is more beneficial to uh, use um, structure which has uh, uh, the alpha angle equal to 50 degrees. And uh, moreover, the lower the value of this alpha angle, the lower the value of effective Poisson's ratio of the structure is, So, which means that the higher oxidicity uh, it's uh, exhibit. Uh, the conducted topology optimization process enable us to reduce the mass of uh, our oxidic cells uh, by 30% while uh, maintaining the full functionality of our oxidic structure. And to sum up, the lower the Poisson's ratio, the greater the energy absorption capacity of the structure was observed. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Now let's turn to conceptual design of a universal robot gripper, enabling rehabilitation of the upper limb from concept to physical model. Okay. My name is Mariusz Sobie. Uh, I work at the Institute of Medical Technology and Equipment as mechanical designer. 
and uh, I am pleased to present a uh, conceptual design of a universal robot gripper enabling rehabilitation of the upper limb from concept to physical model. Uh, the project is a uh, result uh, of the, my collaboration as uh, internship uh, supervisor uh, with student uh, Mr. Benjamin Batowa uh, and uh, his supervisor Ivona Hurnowska. Mm, this function of uh, the movement organs uh, is uh, quite a problem nowadays, uh, so rehabilitation is so uh, important. Often uh, traditional rehabilitation is uh, a just and lengthy process. Uh, the use of robots uh, could uh, change this. Uh, the project includes uh, the conceptual uh, design uh, of a gripper uh, that enable rehabilitation of the upper limb uh, wrist joint. Mm, the gripper was adapted uh, to robot from a universal robot uh, company. Mm, uh, a review of the, uh, of the literature and solution available on the market uh, was performed. Uh, which uh, inspired the develop of free device uh, concept. Uh, to select the optimal solution, uh, a multi-criteria optimi optimization was carried out. Um, the optimal solution uh, is concept two, having a free degree of the freedom um, and allowing uh, easy use of device uh, and uh, access of rotation overlap uh, with uh, access in human joints. And the concept was developed uh, as 3D model uh, using Autodesk Inventor. Um, the idea of the project uh, was uh, create a solution using uh, low cost and uh, easy uh, available uh, components and uh, manufacturing uh, technology. We used uh, servo motor uh, with controller and uh, 3D printing uh, in FDM technology. Um, the device was assembled and uh, noting the potential for improvement. Mm, the work carried, of, uh, carried out uh, confirmed that uh, by using low cost and easy available components and manufacturing te technology, it is possible to make uh, a physical and uh, functionally uh, prototype. Uh, this enable um, in initial uh, verification of the idea and uh, working principle of the device operation and also assess in ergonomic and design. Um, implementation of such a project uh, has a positive impact on the education of the student future engineering. They can relate uh, the theoretical uh, knowledge about a virtual uh, design to reality. Uh, this project uh, still in progress. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. And the next speech is on the gyroscope-based gait cycle analysis used in prosthetics. Welcome, everyone. My name is Paweł Lipowicz, and today I'm from the Design Pro Technology Company. And today I would like to present a poster about the gyroscope-based gain cycle analysis. The angle of the ankle joint chains depend on the speed of walking and the terrain of the person is working on. Uh, the correct position uh, of the foot uh, in the prosthesis is important to amputee safety uh, and they mimic the most uh, natural uh, way of walking. Uh, in this solution, we used a BMX 160 gyroscope and accelerometer chip from the Bosch. Uh, it was connected to the STM microprocessor uh, and communication was resolved, um, uh, provided by the uh, Bluetooth chip. Uh, the circuit was mounted uh, on a person ankle 
and the data acquisition was performed uh, under virus terrain. Uh, and also, of course, uh, this, the same chip was implemented into our first uh, functional uh, um, prototype of ankle um, joint prosthesis. Uh, in this solution, um, during the study, uh, we um, have uh, uh, angular acceleration data. Uh, were filtered and proceed by um, to obtain the graph the graphs um, of angle over time. Uh, from the data, we identified the characteristic point uh, in um, in these uh, graphs um, and um, the shape of the um, curves. Uh, this allow us to collect uh, gait um, um, speed and identify. Uh, whether of terrain, a uh, person is moving uphill or downhill, uh, and the data is indiv individually implemented in the prosthesis for each person, uh, and the device uh, adduces the angle of the foot uh, during the gait based on um, this data. Uh, also, we use a uh, same gauge measurement, uh, the prosthesis load, to uh, fine tune the measurement. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And the next speech is on ECG quality assessment using deep learning. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Konrad Duray, and today I would like to present you a method for assessing the ECG quality. Um, so for this project, me and my colleague used an openly available data set, which was developed by the Brno University of Technology. Uh, this data set consisted of signals from 15 patients uh, where the minimal, uh, minimal duration of the signal was, uh, tw was 24 hours. It was labeled by the specialist from the Brno University of Technology into three categories. The good quality signal where all the parts of the standard ECG waveform are present and clear. The acceptable quality where we can still distinguish between the signal and noise, but, uh, well, there is some noise. Uh, and the unacceptable quality where we cannot differ differentiate between the signal and the noise itself. Uh, and for this project, uh, as for the methodology, it was as follows. We first split our data set into training, validation, and test set based, patient based. Then we divided uh, the ECG signals into windows of size uh, 2,000 samples. For each of, this, of these windows, we've calculated the set of features. It was six features. The first one was the skewness of the data distribution for each window. The second one was the courtesies of, of the data distribution. And then we've calculated the area under the power spectrum relative to the QRS bandwidth and the area under the power spectrum relative to the baseline. Uh, and for the last two features, we've calculated the ratio between the mean and standard deviation of differences between the two consecutive R peaks and the offset of the detection of R peaks based on two different detection algorithms. Uh, these features uh, were then scaled and passed on to the classifier and tested as for the results. Uh, the, the classifier was a neural network, the multi-layer perception, uh, which consisted of two hidden layers, where each layer consisted of 16 nodes each. Um, our classifiers work quite well on the test set, although we can see from, the, from the measured metrics, we can see uh, a clear, clear trend for, the, for overfitting, which can be fixed in the future. Uh, by introducing regularization techniques, uh, but most importantly, this, uh, this method is uh, extremely computationally efficient and can work in the closed systems uh, without needing of the high performance server. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. And the next presentation is entitled Review of Innovative Virtual Reality Solutions Supporting the Rehabilitation of COVID-19 Patients.
już zacznę, dobrze? My name is Ewelina Sobotnicka. I represent Łukasiewicz Research Network, Institute of Medical Technology and Equipment. Thank you. Uh, I would like to present uh, my work about a title, a Review of Innovative uh, Virtual Reality Solution Supporting the Rehabilitation of COVID-19 Patients. Uh, the aim of the study was to discuss innovative methods and technologies used in virtual reality for rehabilitation, as well as to collect and systematize information of the possibilities of effective rehabilitation uh, in pat uh, patients during or after COVID-19. Uh, material and methods, uh, search strategy. Uh, PubMed database was searched uh, using the following criteria, rehabilitation and uh, virtual reality and uh, COVID-19. Articles were filtered by date of publication and systematic review. Inclusion criteria, rehabilitative intervention for the upper and lower limbs in the virtual environment, and both specialized virtual reality and virtual reality gaming system were included. A data collection screening for research record was conducted by two persons. Uh, additionally, we make a review of virtual reality methods and comparison of the conventional rehabilita rehabilitation versus specialized uh, uh, virtual reality. Uh, res uh, results, uh, we identified 58 papers, 58 papers. After screening the abstract, the eight papers were selected for full text reading. Final total of two papers were included in the review. Uh, virtual reality in rehabilitation is a, uh, a uh, more, uh, have a more solution. The examples of this solution is Nintendo Wii systems, uh, IREX, uh, balance rehabilitation unit, and more and more solutions. In conclusion, virtual reality has great potential in supporting healthcare activities, especially during the five against the effect of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for the presentation. And the next talk will be on VR haptic glove. Hello, my, no, my name is Andrzej Michnik. Uh, I am represent uh, Łukasiewicz uh, Research Network, and also I am a uh, PhD student uh, on Silesian, uh, Silesian University of Technology. Okay, uh, I think uh, that the VR uh, or um, Augmented reality is very useful for, for many interesting purposes like uh, uh, entertaining such games, uh, but also in uh, you know, fitness training, uh, rehabilitation or teaching. So uh, we try to uh, develop some uh, simple and not expensive uh, solution of uh, virtual haptic glove. Uh, <coughs> as you see, uh, we have uh, some sensors uh, which uh, detect uh, you know, flexation of fingers, uh, and also we have uh, inertial measurement unit, which uh, mm, measure the position of our hand. All uh, data was sending by uh, microcontroller with uh, embedded uh, radio, uh, uh, Bluetooth low energy to the computer. Okay, uh, we, here we have uh, some uh, Unity environment uh, when we can visual, visualization our, uh, our hand. And also we can detect uh, collision with uh, other objects in the virtual world. And this information of collision is sent back to the uh, micro uh, vibration element in the, in the glove. Um, and uh, we have now some uh, models of, uh, of uh, fixation sensor, and also we, we test uh, uh, inertial measurement unit. Um, and now we, we try to uh, combine uh, these this, uh, models to one, one uh, device, and we um, pay attention to uh, um, achieve very uh, small uh, de delay with communication with these uh, uh, elements of this uh, system. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And the next talk will be on matter response model in the function of selective acoustic parameters of metrorhythmic stimulation. Good afternoon. My name is Alexandra Tusha, and what I'd like to present to you today 
is uh, the effect of our work on a development of a method to assess the variability of muscles activation and analysis of the response time to metrorhythmic stimuli. So um, the most important issues we considered from many points of view, as you can see, were, were the selection of muscles for EMG examination, then movement pattern and patient's position during testing, and finally, personalization of stimulus parameters, so the initial values and so on. Uh, what you can also see, uh, this is uh, some of the equipment that we used, some of the measurement equipment. And tests we proposed uh, are the lateralization test and then selection of preferred metrorhythmic stimulus rate by each patient. So then when all electrodes are placed, our um, patients will be asked for rhythmically stomping their heel and after that for rhythmically pressing a keyboard key with their index finger. And another thing is that the acoustic stimulus rate, in this case it will be uh, sound of the metronome, uh, should be increased and decreased uh, by 5% of the patient's preferred tempo. And what's for? Mm, this method should allow the determination of the measurement window, uh, which is crucial for further research in our project, as you can uh, see. And the detailed results of the analysis will be published hopefully soon. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. The next talk will be on modeling of and numerical analysis of the strength of osteosynthesis plate used to stabilize long bone fractures. Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I uh, show you a short brief of our work. My name is Michal Rychik. I'm from Poznan University of Technology. Uh, our study it was uh, connected with the uh, uh, simulation and test um, uh, osteosynthesis plates um, in compared to the regular one that it is striped uh, on this image, the first one here presented, and um, uh, the second uh, different shape that is turned spirally in the 90 degree. It's like quarter of the circle. So we just would like to test uh, how this influence on the forces inside um, uh, after connection with the bone. So we test on the model of the femur bone and we create the four variant of uh, fractures. And uh, after that, we uh, of course uh, add all um, uh, appropriate uh, material properties for cortical bone, sponge bone and uh, fixation plates and screws across so that it is correct in the materials. Uh, it was a simple model just for the test, uh, what it is um, about the stresses and displacements. And here it is a, a boundary conditions, the force and 60, uh, 650 newtons. And here it is a just fixation of, of our bone. Uh, the results that we obtained for these four cases, in, in these four variants, we did simulations for the full uh, regular plate with the straight uh, shape and this different one that it is turned. Uh, and we receive in standard variants these values of the um, uh, maximum uh, von Spinze stresses and for the uh, new shape that it is like uh, from 30 to, to uh, 50, 40 percent of lower uh, level of stresses in compared to these three variants and about four, uh, 50 percent reduce the stresses in the uh, variant number four. So uh, this show the different potential that it is in a different shape of, of uh, such kind of the plate, that it is of course the, the base um, study and, and uh, it should be, it should be uh, created with the uh, different uh, conditions analysis and also discussion with the medical staff uh, about the implementation of such kind of the plates. There is uh, several uh, clinics and hospitals that uh, make such kind of the uh, testing plates on the patients that also from the medical point of view that they have uh, better results uh, after implementation, but they are much more difficult to implement by the medical staff. So thank you for attention and that's all on today. Thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation. And the next talk will be on uh, evaluation of a 3D printed bone model, customized saw guide and jig for anterior brachial angular rim deformity surgical correction in dogs.
Hello everyone, it's uh, a pleasure to speak to you, especially that I'm a graduate of this department seven years ago, who has uh, our, my own company now, Kabiomede. So I'm Mateusz Pawlik and I would like to present you uh, something a bit different, especially that we didn't have any veterinary studies during the biomedical engineering studies. So the idea behind the project was to develop the jig for the the, uh, for the oste co corrective osteotomy in a, a case of two dogs. So on the basis of CT scan, the bone model was developed, then the uh, mirrored healthy bone was used for the correction. So the rotation, angulation, and the corrections were done on the basis of a healthy leg mirrored model. Then the jig was uh, developed in a way that after cutting, it allowed to remove the first part of the jig and then use the second jig as a temporary stabilizer for securing the models and for attaching the plate. Both of the dogs were, the surgeries were done on the, in a case of a two dogs with uh, success. As you can see here in the, in the slide, uh, those models were definitely helpful for the surgeon as they allowed to decrease the time of the surgery. They allowed to have a bigger precision because during the surgery, in some cases, for example, a really small dog, uh, having a uh, correction of uh, 10 degrees, for example, in case of a Yorkshire Terrier is almost impossible. In case of those two dogs, it was a bit um, bigger uh, race of the dog but still uh, the feasibility which was checked during the, the project uh, shows that this approach is really important. It's really good in case of a veterinary surgery of uh, correction of such, uh, such diseases. As in case of veterinary, the range of patients is a bit different in uh, human beings. Our smallest patients are one kilo dogs. The biggest one are for example, 90 kilos. So this approach is really good solution for having an increased accuracy and success ratio of in, in, in surgeries. Thank you. Thank you for the interesting presentation. And the next talk will be on uh, surface electromyography and muscle force. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Dariusz Komorowski. I am from uh, Slezian University of Technology Faculty of Biomedical Engineering. And the aim of uh, this study was the question, are parameters that can be extracted from the EMG correlated with muscle force? Uh, to answer to this question, the EMG uh, signal were simultaneously recorded with uh, signal force and proceeded according uh, this uh, diagram. Uh, firstly, the uh, rough uh, surface EMG signals were uh, filtered by bank of uh, fear filter. Next, uh, the absolute value of uh, EMG signal was calculated and some spikes were removed. Uh, after that, the uh, envelope of EMG was obtained and the envelope was thresholded to obtain the uh, maximum value of contraction. And in the end, the obtained value was compared to maximum value of the force. Uh, the uh, exemplary results are depicted in these pictures. Uh, on the top, we can see the uh, see, envelope of the, of the EMG signal and the uh, level of uh, MVC. Uh, on the below, this is a, a, a force uh, signal. Uh, on the left, you can see that the MVC level is, uh, level is similar, but the force is uh, different. And uh, in the right, uh, we can see that the uh, levels of MVC are different, but the maximum values of the force are similar. Uh, the obtained preliminary results uh, led us to my conclusion. The simple conversion from the EMG amplitude or over parameters like uh, frequency, dominant frequency or uh, median frequency uh, is uh, difficult to define. Thank you for your attention.
Thank you very much. And let me introduce the next speaker who will tell about the modern applications of bioimpedance spectroscopy. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Mirela Urzenichuk and I work at uh, Lukasiewicz Institute of Medical Technology and Equipment. I have also just started a PhD at uh, Silesia University of Technology. Okay. Uh, oh, sorry. The topic, the topic of my uh, poster are the modern applications of uh, bioimpedance spectroscopy. Uh, I will use the BIS shortcut for the rest of the presentation. Um, so I would like to focus on for the um, most prospective, in my opinion, um, modern BIS applications. Um, in first application, the BIS is used um, for creating an early detector um, for breast cancer-related lymphodemia, uh, which allows to identify the subclinical changes uh, which are more amenable to treatment. Um, the second application, um, BIS is used for um, developing the real-time safe and secure system for um, localize the pulmonary uh, nodules by bioimpedance bio spectrum um, of the lung tissue. Uh, third appli uh, application, um, the BIS is used for creating the non-invasive glucose um, monitoring system um, based on the mathematical relationship between the um, blood glucose concentration and the um, and its electrical impedance, and in the last application is related with um, creating the uh, real-time bedside uh, monitoring system for uh, uh, monitoring system of fluid volumes uh, for patients uh, with her heart, heart uh, failure. Uh, I am sure that there is more um, more uh, BIS applications for uh, to discover to develop. Um, the research is still ongoing. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for your talk. And the next talk is on influence of 3D printing parameters on the mechanical properties of veterinary implants used for the treatment of ACL rupture. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Claudia Holeva, and I would like to briefly present our article uh, called Influence of 3D Printing Parameters on the Mechanical Properties of veterinary Im uh, implants used for the treatment of ACL rupture. The article uh, was written as part of work of Students' Scientific Association Synergia. As we all know, not only people have joint problems, they can also affect dogs. Uh, metal implants used in traditional methods uh, still cause problems with regeneration. To meet this challenge, in collaboration with Cabiomete, we have designed biodegradable polymer implants made by 3D printing. Uh, the properties of the polymer and the design of the implant will allow to, uh, for faster regeneration of bone tissue and then biodegradation, uh, which, uh, which is safe for the dog's patient. And here is the construction of the implant. During the project, parameters had to be selected. We designed an implant that can be used by most dogs, weighing around about 30 kilograms. Another key aspect is the environment in which the medical device will be located and how its properties will change in it. Therefore, it's necessary to consider the use of sterilization and the influence of degradation on changes in the material. During the project, implant surfaces, hardness, wettability, roughness were examined and static compression tests were performed to find out whether the selected material and geometry could become safer replacements for classic implants for treatment in dogs. In our project, we examined five, five types of implants. The external dimensions of each of them are the same, but the difference is visible in the internal dimensions, and the dimensions with markings are here uh, on this poster, uh, right uh, on the right side. And uh, as mentioned, each type uh, of the implant uh, has undergone sterilization, eight and 12 weeks degradation. We are able to 
uh, observe the change of the color in the implant and its internal dimensions thanks to microscopic observation, as you can see uh, on this slide. And the wettability uh, showed that the base material is hydrophobic uh, and when placed into the environment like the dog's body, it changed into hydrophilic. From the strength test, we have obtained information that the material and the structure use is sufficiently durable regardless uh, of the conditions for the dog's bone to regenerate. And to conclude uh, our article and our poster, design and implants can be alternatively used in surgical procedure procedures. And thanks for your attention. Thank you for your speech. And now let's listen about the stabilography parameters after hip flexion and extension training during simulated space missions isolation. Good afternoon, my name is Dobrochna Fritz and I'm a PhD student at the Faculty of Biomechatronics at the University, um, Silesian University of Technology. So usually the lunaris habitat is used for um, widening the knowledge about um, human psychophysiological response to the stress of isolation, as well as to uh, test and develop technology. But this particular um, study was designed to test uh, hip flexion as an uh, extension uh, resistant training. Mm, so, um, so the training was implemented during two missions, uh, and each mission uh, had uh, six crew members, um, and uh, there was an even proportion of uh, men and women. Uh, each crew performed six sessions uh, during 14 days of uh, each uh, of isolation, with the uh, resting period lasting not uh, less than one day. Uh, one crew used uh, hip flexion, and the second crew used uh, hip uh, extension uh, exercise. Uh, there was a specially designed machine allowing to perform multi-joint hip flexion resistant training uh, used in a study, and the opposite movement was um, was made by uh, adding the load plates uh, to the squat exercise. Uh, in both exercises, the 60% uh, of one rep repetition maximum was used. Mm, and um, the particip participants performed five series of 10 repetitions um, and uh, proceeded the training with the uh, proper warm up. And the stabilography examination uh, was done daily um, in the morning and as well as after each training uh, because uh, the habitat allows for um, implementing daily routine uh, of the study. Um, and the parameters acquired um, during the examination uh, were uh, measured before, after, and one day after uh, each training session. So the results are just the prelim preliminary results because it was uh, like a pilot study, and uh, they showed that there is a tendency for different body mass distribution um, in both trainings. So there is a slight increase in front foot load and uh, in a, a in a hip extension and uh, the back foot load in a hip flexion and also uh, the asymmetry of the load so there is an increase in the right foot uh, load in after um, a hip extension and uh, the left foot after a hip flexion training um, the conclusions, so as a pilot study project has shown a possible path for research in a topic of muscle, muscle asymmetry. Uh, however, the results that we obtained are not yet statistically significant. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And the next presentation is on rapid manufacturing of, of individual supplies for eye socket reconstructive surgery. Ladies and gentlemen, um, good afternoon. My name is Magdalena Żukowska, and I will present st uh, st uh, st case study about uh, patient uh, recover uh, reconstruction of uh, eye socket. And the aim of the study is to present uh, use of 3D printing in individualized, uh, uh, individualized procedure of uh, reconstructive uh, surgery. Uh, the whole methodology is typical for uh, uh, medical models. Uh, however, uh, two, um, two, uh, two moments are quite important, and it's 
uh, digital mesh post-processing, the process of designing, and uh, the 3D printing process. So when it uh, came to uh, models designing, uh, because eye socket and the lower wall is uh, really thin, uh, the problem is uh, during the process of uh, segmentation. Even when the um, MRI scans are really uh, thin, uh, like 0 0.6 millimeters, it's still too thick uh, to make the proper uh, look of the lower wall of eye socket. So the whole process uh, is to connecting uh, the connecting uh, places where the uh, holes are to create the proper look of the lower wall of uh, uh, eye socket. And the second uh, uh, pro uh, the second step was to creating the model uh, with uh, imitation how the correct look of eye socket of patient uh, should look like. And most of the people, most of the society have a symmetrical faces, symmetrical eye sockets, so we can create the process using mirror image uh, method. And the results uh, are that during the uh, manufacturing, uh, we cr create models using uh, resin, uh, which is uh, biocompatible and uh, uh, could be sterilized uh, during the preparation for operation and during the uh, process of uh, preparation of uh, operation of the patient, uh, we can uh, use the models and uh, to create the proper. Uh, the proper, um, the proper uh, shape of the uh, implant and uh, to uh, cut uh, the proper size of the bones to create uh, um, the reconstruction of the eye socket. And it's necessary to use uh, models like this uh, to make per operation more safer for the patient because uh, during the process we uh, don't work in area under the eye we work on the models. So when we put the implant under the elbow, uh, there's no uh, chance to affect uh, optic nerve. So it's uh, better for the patient. Uh, it gives more uh, safe, uh, safer uh, situation for the doctor, for the patient, and uh, create a uh, better condition to uh, future, uh, future uh, patients' uh, recovery. And uh, it's next step, natural step for individualized medicine. So we hope the 3D printing will be a part of the diagnosis and uh, uh, process of uh, mid-operation support. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And now uh, the presentation on solving the boundary value problems by meshless methods for representing the shapes of children's hand bones obtained from radiographs. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Jakub Grabski, and I would like to uh, present the topic, the idea related to representing uh, the shapes by uh, solving uh, the boundary value problems using the meshless methods. This idea is not so popular in computer vision, uh, and uh, in this approach, uh, we want to obtain a distribution of any artificial uh, physical quantity uh, based on the boundary of the given shape. Um, here you can see the uh, pre-processing pre pre uh, process, which uh, allow us to uh, obtain the um, points uh, based on the given shape, and these points can be directly used for um, solving the internal and external boundary value problems. And as you can see in the uh, last figure on this slide, uh, depending on the shape we want to compare with the given shape, we can use the solution from the internal or external boundary value problem. And in the results, you can uh, see the example using the method of fundamental uh, solutions, uh, where you can see four given 
uh, shapes and uh, two um, uh, two uh, shapes which are compared with uh, these shapes and the minimal values were uh, obtained for uh, the same type of uh, bones uh, obtained from uh, children's uh, hand radiographs. Thank you for uh, your attention. Thank you very much. Uh, and now automated design and 3D printing of therapeutic wrist hand orthosis. Thank you very much. <laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Filip Górski, and I represent Poznan University of Technology. And today I'm going to present you very shortly uh, one use case of our automated print system. We also do lots more than that in our system, so I encourage you to visit this website of our project. Uh, and uh, the aim of this particular case was to prepare a therapeutic orthosis for a 13-year-old th patient with congenital paresis of his right arm. Due to this condition, uh, our patient's arm is underdeveloped and he has some serious defects in, in wrist area. And the traditional orthosis were too heavy and not uh, useful for the patient. So we decided to apply our methodology of, uh, of our automated print system. First, we 3D scanned uh, our patient. We did contactless measuring, uh, measurement of our patient, both hands. Then we created, mostly automatically, we created uh, uh, extracted data for, for our design. The design of initial version of the orthosis was performed fully automatically. Again, I don't have much time to explain uh, how it works, uh, but it was done automatically in Autodesk Inventor. Uh, then we added some specific features for therapy, for daily use, some cutouts. Uh, then we made a virtual tryout uh, with, the, with the 3D scan. And then we 3D printed it using a cheap 3D printer using uh, PLA material. So we uh, used uh, available 3D printers, uh, very cheap ones, with uh, low-cost PLA material. Uh, we used parameters that you can see here on the slide uh, with, with some standard uh, post-processing, also lining with uh, foam. Uh, and we did some testing with physiotherapists and then daily use. So our patient used, has been using this kind of orthosis for more than a year now. Uh, in the meantime, of course, he grew up, so we did uh, another version for the, of the orthosis for him. We have some results, uh, so we successfully confirmed that this type of 3D printed or lightweight orthosis can be used in therapy of this particular, of this particular condition. Uh, so th this, this was all thanks to our uh, automated print system, which was developed uh, in the scope of the leader program financed by National uh, Center of Science and Development. And uh, just to mention that for uh, our work, we received recently a, uh, f an award of Polish product of the future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much and congratulations, of course. And the next talk will be on the influence of sleep duration on the feeling of well-being during the COVID-19 lockdown. And who is the stress? The pillow, yes. yeah? <laughs> okay. So, <clears throat> good afternoon. My name is Rafał Doniec. Doniec, uh, I'm just really nice to and warm welcome. And I will just present you a very short words, the, some kind of part of my life, like a student's uh, project during the part of recognition course. And we need to come back the one step in the past, actually, two years, so to 2020, when the COVID uh, lockdown is start. Yeah? And uh, that is the short introduction, and the question actually is not true. The question was like uh, impressed by the students because I have uh, the, this class is very early morning in the eight and Friday, so they always complain that we are sleepy and damaged, yeah? So I just said, you need to sleep the much more amount of time, yeah? And they not agree, so that is the aim. That is like my some personal win, yeah? On the students. And how the student just collect the material and methods? Methods, we use the, for example, some kind of, because we are not familiar with the, <coughs> uh, we're not educated with the clinical stress. So we need to uh, help from the medical university about the, some kind of 
uh, type how to investigate the stress and for example the stress how is impact for the, the rest of the life like a wellness for example and uh, the first was the some kind of questionnaire and we just prepared uh, maybe 12 12 that was 12 questions in that questionnaire and was aimed on the uh, in the focus on the mental uh, mental behavior during the day yeah and the three next features just for to create the model uh, was uh, used from the smarts bands watch and etc and we just asked that all the participants of the uh, questionnaire test yeah about the some kind of record from that devices yeah and that was the start and the results how I said that is like the, some kind of personal win and I'm just improved and right now quite obvious that if you sleep longer you uh, feel better your wellness is much better so I would right now have it on the digits that that theory thank you very much that's all thank you very much the next talk will be on uh, the electroactive polymers as cardiopatches for uh, regenerative medicine Good night, ladies and gentlemen. That's good morning in Turkish, I believe. I don't know if the pronunciation is good enough, but this is the only word that I remember from my Turkish students. They taught me many more, mostly nasty, nasty, nasty words, but I forgot almost everything, fortunately. Today, I'd like to share your attention, to pay your attention to some other topic, to the topic of the materials science. Because in the stress, I forgot to say my name. My name is Sylvia Golba, and I work at the Silesian University at the Institute of Materials Engineering. I work with the conductive polymers, and we try to imply, to find new application for this type of very specific and very nice materials. I believe I will give you a little bit of the hint what we are doing and why we are doing that. Our aim is to, is to produce the implant, new kind of the implant that will support the growth of the tissue, that will help to regenerate the tissue, but a special kind of the tissue, the cardiac one. Because we believe that electroactivity of our conducting polymers, usually polymers are not conductive, they are isolator mainly, but if we put into the system of the polymeric system a special kind of bonds, which are so-called conjugated bonds, which is the single and the double bonds, single and double bonds, it will provide the possibility to generate the ordered flow of the electrical, electrical charge carrier, which means that the current will be flow through this system. In our work, we synthesize in a chemical way. We can also use the electrochemical way, but in this part of the work, I will only focus on the chemical way, the polymeric material, which is the polypyrrole. We put it into the system, and as we know that the structure of the material itself, but also the morphology of the material, is very, very important for the functionality of itself in the biological system, we was thinking, we were wondering, if we can obtain a kind of control over the morphology. So we propose the classical method of the synthesis and so-called template-based synthesis. We uh, choose several conditions. I'm not going to go into details right now. We chose the pyrrole. You can see it here on the slide. We, of course, had to use a kind of oxidant to force the system to be oxidized. And we, of course, used our magical MO, which stands for methylene orange. And this is the template that we wanted to use. As a result, we, of course, characterized our samples. Yes, we got it. Here on the slide, you can see the picture. Of course, this is just a sketch. The product is in the powder form, which we can afterwards process in a different way. Spin coating, deep coating, electro spinning, plenty of possibilities to do. We found out what is the impact, impact of the synthesis condition on the conductivity, which we are interested in, of course. And we also revealed that we, yes, we, we obtained the control over the um, regularity, over the morphology, as we were able to obtain nanotubes. On the picture, you can see the result of the same imaging from the classical and from the template-based systems. 
methods, and we can see that we indeed got the nano structuring organization. What's the conclusion, ladies and gentlemen? Yes, we obtained nanostructural portions, nanostructural organization in the, in the polypyrol. Sometimes we obtained two phases that coexist, the structural, nanostructure organized and disorganized, but we can obtain that with the synthetic protocol, the possibility to, to, to get only the one of them. And this material can be used for the conducting scaffold preparation. But in the TE, tissue engineering, we need three basic factors. The cells, the scaffolds, and the matrix, yes? We know how to produce the templates, the scaffolds. We can imply the matrix, but we don't know how to seed the cells. That's why I'm searching for the cooperation with the people who exactly know how to do that, and I hope I will find a kind of in cooperation here among some of you. Thank you very much for your attention. That's all from my point. Thank you very much. And the next talk will be on the analysis of the SARS-CoV-2 molecular sequences using bioinformatics tools. Good afternoon. Uh, today I'd like to talk to you about bioinformatics analysis of uh, uh, SARS-CoV-2 um, uh, sequences. Uh, uh, the main goal of uh, this study was uh, to, uh, to create uh, uh, phylogenetic trees that could help uh, illustrate uh, the process that led to development of the uh, SARS coronavirus 2 that led to um, uh, the um, recent global pandemic. Uh, so uh, in uh, this study, um, uh, I used um, sequences that were found in the uh, NCBI uh, database. Uh, uh, I went with uh, protein sequences uh, due to the fact that uh, some of the sequences were um, far enough uh, related that uh, the, uh, it prevented the uh, use of uh, genetic material. Uh, I uh, used um, sequences from uh, 52 coronaviruses, uh, which uh, uh, were uh, uh, which affected different animals, but mostly humans and bats. Uh, do you, uh, because um, the uh, evolutionary uh, process can be a different rate for different sequences, I had to um, uh, choose uh, several uh, proteins to study, and uh, based on availability, the proteins were uh, there were they, there were uh, four proteins included in the study that were uh, spike, nucleocapsid membrane, and envelope proteins. Uh, uh, then uh, uh, the process had uh, four steps. First, multiple sequence uh, alignment that uh, allowed to find the uh, mm, presentation of uh, the sequences that were m most similar and could be used for further computation. Then uh, the aligned sequences uh, were, uh, uh, were transformed into uh, distance matrix uh, using Juke-Scantor uh, method uh, to alleviate uh, effects of um, multiple uh, sub substitutions that could um, uh, distort uh, the results. Uh, then uh, the, uh, there were created uh, phylogenetical trees uh, using two methods, UPDMA and uh, na uh, neighbor joining, and uh, in the end, the 
results were validated using uh, bootstrap method uh, to uh, ascertain uh, if the result could be um, laid from a, a random chance. Uh, so as a result, uh, there were uh, eight trees created uh, and um, uh, there were certain differences between the trees, but uh, some things remained the same. And the main focus was uh, the, the most closely related uh, sequences. So um, uh, they, were, they remained the same for most uh, of the trees. And the, uh, the one that, uh, the one virus that was uh, remain most closely related in all of uh, the results was the bad coronavirus RATG13 that w is the, in literature the most proposed uh, uh, potential uh, processor of um, SARS-CoV-2. So uh, thank you. For sure. that. Thank you very much. Thank you. And the next presentation will be on the me measurement system to evaluate the dog's motion functions using IMU sensors. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Agnieszka Głowacka and I work uh, on the Faculty of Mechanical Engineering. And together with the team from uh, Biomedical Engineering, we would like to present our uh, study. Um, uh, related to the animal movement analysis. Uh, the aim of the study was to develop the prototype of a measurement system that will objectively support the diagnosis of the dog's musculoskeletal system. Um, this system consists of two uh, inertial measurement unit uh, sensor and is connected with uh, an Arduino Mega board. Uh, one dog was uh, one dog was tested, um, and the system was attached to the dog with the special harness. Uh, inertial measurement unit sensor uh, were localized on the whiters and pelvic on the dogs. Um, exam examination was registered while the dogs was walking slowly. Uh, then an algorithm was developed in MATLAB and it was uh, possible to show the kinematic quantities um, associated with uh, dog, the dog's movement, such as uh, acceleration and angular waveforms of the individual segment of the dog's movement system. And uh, thanks to the system, it will be possible to assess the dog's locomotor functions. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. And we uh, came to our last presentation. In, 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 this is a study on individual, individualized leg or poses made by 3D printing of composite material. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, good uh, afternoon. Uh, today I would like to talk about the study of individualized leg or toes made by 3D printing uh, of composite uh, material. Uh, I am a PhD student at Poznan University of Technology. And the aim of the study was to uh, compare uh, the mechanical uh, properties of uh, ankle foot orthosis for 40 year old uh, patient. Uh, printing uh, by ABS uh, and ABS with carbon fiber um, materials. Um, as you can see, uh, I uh, used also the automatic print system uh, uh, to create an AFO model uh, for our patient. Here is a methodology which was also in the presentation of uh, uh, Philip Gorski. Uh, and uh, here you can see uh, uh, generated uh, FO uh, orthosis. Uh, we uh, did uh, two uh, kinds of uh, testing. Uh, first of all, uh, them was a strength test, and here is the picture of uh, uh, 
uh, this test. Uh, and a uh, second wall was the uh, roughness uh, testing. Of the results, uh, you can see that um, uh, after the um, uh, after the um, strength test, uh, here is a figure uh, where you can see the uh, ABS without the kyber fiber uh, has uh, the smaller displacement uh, than uh, in the same force uh, that uh, ABS with the carbon fiber. And uh, here also in the feature four, you can see uh, uh, results of roughness and um, a roughness of uh, only ABS uh, because it was uh, impossible to uh, testing uh, uh, for uh, with uh, ABS uh, with carbon fiber uh, because it was uh, over the limit uh, of the uh, uh, of the uh, profilometer. And to conclusion, uh, to sum up, uh, orthosis made of ABS with carbon fiber are more difficult to uh, manufacturing and have worse uh, man uh, mechanical properties than orthosis made by ABS. Thank you for your attention. Okay, thanks very much to all the presenters. There's a lot of research and engineering behind the study. So uh, if you have any questions, if you have any remarks to the presenters, feel free to use the backstage discussion right now or tomorrow or anytime you want. I hope there's a lot of collaboration to come uh, from the studies. Uh, on behalf of uh, the organizing committee, I'd like to say about a few things, just a few brief uh, announcements. The first one will be, right now, you can visit uh, the European Health Tech Innovation Center. There's such a slot in our schedule. So if you want to visit any of the floors of our building, of our center, just contact the registration desk. There will probably be some guided tours uh, through our laboratories. Uh, then. Uh, the members of the Conference Program Council and Scientific Committee are invited to attend the, the dinner it, at the Hollow Diamond in Zabrze. Also, all information can be found at the registration desk. And all other participants uh, are invited to the lobby where we had a lunch for some hot meal also at 5.30, as I was said. Okay, and don't forget to come tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow our conference starts at 9 a.m. Uh, with the session uh, of the American Heart of Poland, and then we will also have the Computational Oncology and Personalized Medicine session from 11 a.m. Thank you again, thank you to our partners for presentations. Have a good evening and see you tomorrow. Thank you.